So I want to reenact for you uh, what typically happens when I tell people about my profession. Hey, Ray, heard you moved to uh, Sitka, Alaska. What are you doing up there? Oh, I'm a community organizer for this environmental nonprofit, Sitka Conservation Society. A community organizer? Say what? What's that? That's typically the response that I get when I'm telling people about my profession. And so I'm really thankful that I get to kind of discuss the anatomy about community organizing a little bit more in detail so we can dispel some myths. But before we begin to do that, I would like you all to just take a moment and think about the room that we're in right now. And feel free to take a look around. It's very vulnerable right now. You can see that there's still some work to be done, but think about the, the floor that your feet are resting on, or the structure of the stage, or the performances that you may have seen here and have already seen earlier today. As you all know, this building, Sheldon Jackson College's Allen Hall, was at one point condemned and on its way to being demolished. Built in 1911, this building obviously was not going to be in the best of shape. The roof was falling apart, the second floor was sagging in, and the building had become a storage site for dusty junk. Empty of people and on its way to being condemned, a small group of people in our community of Sitka, Alaska, banded together and saw a value in this building worth preserving. They saw that this, this building was a community asset and together formed a group called the Allen Memorial Preservation Incorporated. Now this group was very small and informal. It wasn't a large group of people initially. And they worked hard to raise funds so that they could uh, fix the roof and outer structure of the building before Sheldon Jackson College went bankrupt and all the buildings had to close down. Now let's take a moment to just like back up. That's Allen Hall right there, we're in right now. Let's take a moment and just back up and think about this story. The narrative of getting people together, setting goals, and enacting those goals is not unique to the Allen, Mom Allen Hall Memorial Pre Preservation Group. This, is, in fact, is community organizing. Community organizing is a practice that brings ordinary people together, like you and me, for a common goal. We set these goals, and then we work towards enacting them. This building is a living testament to the powerful changes that can occur through community organizing. After Sean Jackson College shut down, after all these buildings closed, there were more people outside of the Allen Memorial Preservation Group that saw a value in this building and began envisioning it as something different than a dilapidated building. Together with thousands of volunteer hours put in, they were able to transform this building and bring it to life. And here we are today in this structure. Community organizing is a practice that invites anyone to participate in it and the challenges and that come with accomplishing our goals. The more people we invite into our cause, the stronger and more resilient we become because we need a lot of people to come together to endure. Because more people in our community imagine this once dilapidated building as something different, they are able to transform it from a falling apart dilapidated building into one of our country's most prestigious summer camps and now the home of TEDx Sitka. So let's give those people and all of their efforts a round of applause for doing that. Now, I wanted to pull something out of this story that's really important. The way that the world is around you is not that way by chance. Our community, our society, our culture, and our government are the, are the way that they are because they were created that way by previous generations. And now we currently come together and enact the decisions that those people made previously. And this is why your imagination is so important. Your imagination allows you to envision the world around you see it as something differently than it already is, and picture the steps necessary in order to change, uh, or, or in order to make positive changes occur. Because people were able to envision this building as something different, we are now here today experiencing it. What goes in hand in hand with your imagination is the power of your voice. The power of your voice in inspiring not only yourself, but the people around you to join you in making positive changes occur. The reason why I am here today as a community organizer in the environmental organizing field is because I had two people in my life speak up and inspire me through their words. The first person was Mrs. Clausen, my environmental science teacher in high school. Now, in high school, I was really into writing and reading. I was a total wallflower, and I had my nose in the books. And that is until I took Mrs. Clausen's environmental science class my senior year of high school. 
You see, she had a spark to her words that showed me that I could actually picture myself as an environmental advocate and use writing and reading as tools in that field. And she also helped me reimagine the way that our environment was in the community that I was living in. Because of Ms. Clausen, I was then able to think of myself as an environmental science major and then pursue that as my major my freshman year of school. Because I was interested in the field of environmental science, I started seeking out comrades that were interested in that as well. One such comrade was Julie Garrett, the public relations media coordinator at Santa Fe College. She was also looking for people to work with, and so together with other students, we created the college's first environmental group. At one point, we had 20 people, and we took on projects such as building the college's first organic garden plots. I can still remember the first salad I tasted that came from this garden because it still had sand and dirt on it. And we don't have that experience in restaurants, um, but it was very holistic. Now, I know what you're thinking. This is the story of how a <laughs> privileged white girl becomes a hippie in college, but this is something completely different. <laughs> what we're talking about here today is the power of bringing people together, ordinary people, and having them step up and use their voice to institute positive change. And believe it or not, you are one of those people. Without people just like you and me, I myself as a woman would not have the right to vote. But because of the women's suffrages movement, that changed. Because of people just like you and me, people that are what were once seen as being needing to be institutionalized or separated from community, that no longer happens now um, if they're differently abled because of the disability rights movement. And as of most recently, same-sex couples that might have felt ashamed or quiet are now beginning to speak out. And that is happening right now, and we are working to change that. As you can see, um, in history up until now, uh, the benefits that we've received as individuals in our communities has a is a result of the organizing efforts of other people. So now is the time where I'm asking you to give back. Think about something, a cause or an issue that you want to work on or something you want to see change. Whether it's big or small, whether it impacts just you or those around you, keep that in mind and ask yourself these questions. What could your actions change if you stepped up today? Who could you inspire from these actions to join you in making our world a better place? And if you're having trouble right now trying to picture what you could potentially work on or you're thinking that you don't have that much time, I invite you to join me in working to protect America's Tongass National Forest, which is a 17 million acre temperate rainforest um, that has some of America's last remaining old growth. Because if we don't step up to protect that, um, that could potentially change. And so I hope that I've shown you that um, the way that things are, the way they are now, hasn't always been that way. There have been ind individuals throughout our history and up until now that have been working to make our world a better place. And so I'm asking you, what will you bring to the table? Thank you.